All right, good evening, everybody. I hope you're having fun with your solar projects. So tonight, what I want to talk about is this guy right there, the Victron 450 100 Solar Charge Controller. So I received the Victron MPPT 450 100 solar charge controller from Current Connected. And I've been using that for the last 40 days, maybe 30, 40 days. So in the past, I had the charge controllers built into the inverters. And I ended up going from four charge controllers between the two inverters down to the, just the two that are included in here. This charge controller has two independent MPPT trackers, which allow you to set up two completely separate strings. It has a voltage range from 80 volts up to 450 volts with a startup voltage of 120 volts. And each tracker has a maximum operating current rating of 18 amps. And it actually has a short circuit current rating of 20 amps a piece. So if you look at that, each tracker has a 4,000 watt charging capability, and you can actually over panel the array up to 7,200 watts per tracker. And that's 400, at 450 volts and 20 amps. The maximum efficiency on the charge controller is 96%. And so that's 96% conversion from PV over to the battery. And then it's rated as 15 milliamps of self-consumption power. That's, that's nuts. So when it's not doing anything, it takes up 15 milliamps. It's got a lot of built-in safety features. These trackers are galvanically isolated from the battery to prevent any PV voltage from accidentally leaking into the battery between Reverse polarity on the PV side. It also has reverse polarity detection on the battery side. It even has built-in PV over voltage detection. Now, remember, you don't want to go over the maximum voltage anyways, but it has built-in detection that will throw an error and stop charging if over voltage is detected. This inverter also has multiple communication methods. It has Bluetooth so that you can use the Victron Connect app to be able to connect to and manage the charge controller. It also has a VE Direct port and a VE CAN port for communication. So if you remember back to my installation video, when I put this thing up on the wall, it was, it was very light, very easy to put on the wall. It does have a mounting bracket, which sits up behind the actual charge controller, which is awesome. Uh, I'm a huge fan of being able to hang the bracket first and then hang the device on the wall. Now, if we look at the screen here, it's going to be rotating through a bunch of different displays. So you're going to see tracker one. We're currently pulling in 80 watts. You've got our today, which is how much power has come in for today. And the total is since the system has been reset. So we've got our main screen showing the total between the two trackers. Solar one, 80 watts, and again, 13 kilowatts on solar one, and nine kilowatts on solar two. And total, since I've brought this system online, 743 kilowatts, which is awesome. I've almost put in, you know, three quarters of a megawatt in, what, a month's time? A little over a month's time. The fact that you've got two independent trackers on here is, is a very nice feature because you can set up one array facing one direction and another array in another direction. So if you're like me, I have my array on the roof of my barn is set up to one solar tracker. And then I have my, basically almost the entire length of the fence line is my second tracker. So taking a peek on the inside here, we've got our two trackers, PV1 and PV2. And yes, I know I need to replace the THHN on PV2. I just have to get some more cable to do so. 
We've got our battery connections here, a grounding lug, and then we look up inside here. There is a relay block back in here for input and output, and that relay can be controlled through the Bluetooth app. We've got a temperature sensor and voltage sense connections back in there. And then right up here is our VE Direct, two VE CAN ports here as well. Now one thing if you remember from the installation video is it was very difficult to get these battery connections on these terminals. I had to really move these connections around a lot because it seems like the studs are just way too long for a perfectly sized 5 16 lug to fit right over top. So you really have to angle things sideways and really finagle with it quite a bit just to get it to fit. But eventually we got it connected. The other thing is, it's, it's again, like these inverters here, it's not designed for conduit. These cable glands are very close together and they do not fit a half inch conduit. And then even over here, you've got to have this slot here in order to be able to move your cables around enough to get them to seat on top of this battery connection. So keep that in mind. If you want to go with that conduit look, you're not going to be able to. I am trying to figure out a way to make a custom plate to come underneath here. And then I could run the conduit up into that plate that sits up underneath here just for you know, be a little more visually pleasing, kind of like this over here. So if you're familiar with any other Victron solar charge controller that has Bluetooth enabled, you're gonna access all the data and settings from the Victron Connect app. So you can see right here in the middle, we've got our MPPT 45100. We're gonna tap on that to open it up. The screen does flash when you're connecting to Bluetooth. So just be aware of that it's not glitching or anything. You can see here on the left, you've got the last 30 day breakdown. You've got a detailed section showing the total yield, the maximum power, the maximum voltage, and then the min and max of your battery, as well as any errors that you might've had. And that will be for the last 30 days. And then you can look at the individual breakdown per tracker as well. And on the right hand side, you're gonna have your current tracker breakdown, solar one, solar two, You've got your battery voltage and current down here, as well as the state of the charger, whether or not it's in bulk, float, absorption. And then you've got your relay state down here on the bottom. And like all of these, you can hit this gear button, come up to battery, and this is where you're gonna configure how you're gonna program the actual charger. Set your different charge voltages, your low temp cutoff if you have a temperature sensor connected, so they have this option for partial shading detection. I'm gonna read here from the manual as to what this actually does, but it says, advanced maximum power point detection in case of partial shading conditions. So if partial shading occurs, two or more maximum power points may be present on the power point voltage curve. Conventional MPPTs tend to lock a local maximum power point, which may not be the optimum power point. And the smart solar algorithm will always maximize energy harvested by locking to the optimal power point. You've got your relay controls and you've got a bunch of different options. So you can control, you know, what's the relay gonna do? Is it gonna be when the panel voltage is too high, high temperature, battery low voltage, equalization doesn't apply for lithium, your error state, defrosting, your battery voltage too high, a float state or a day detection. And in my case right now, I'm just leaving it off. And then you've got your display controls. You know, do you want the display to stay on, turn off, be always off? And then what do you want your temperature settings to be? I, I know I have had questions on what's the sound like, because a lot of you guys are coming from or have currently the eg 46500s which just tend to really scream when a lot of PV comes in. And it's actually kind of hard to get the actual volume level on this thing. They're so quiet that you don't really know that they're running. So I've got a few clips from the day after I had this installed for the first time. And I recorded it at different times with different wattage coming into the system. 
So I want to play those back. All right, it's just before nine o'clock in the morning. You can see 1158 watts coming in to the charge controller and it's silent. A minute ago, those fans were running. So it seems to be at least temperature controlled. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see during the day how loud this actually gets once the sun really starts to hit those panels. Both fans finally just turned on. I guarantee you they're not as fast as they could be, but they are running. 1600 watts coming in. So we're putting about 4,000 watts of PV through right now. And you can, again, the fans have not really gotten any louder than what you're currently hearing. I'm assuming they're temperature controlled because once things start to heat up, they just ramp up to this, this current sound level. I have not heard them get any louder. Very nice. I mean, my computer's louder than this thing. But then I also actually took a, a meter and I, unfortunately I don't think I actually recorded it, but the meter actually could not detect any difference in the sound of the room when the fan was running based on the normal ambient sounds in the room. So I want to say the, the normal ambient sounds in the room is like 39 decibels. And I think the, when the fan was running on, on this charge controller, it was still 39 decibels. So it's so quiet that it really can't pick it up. And that's, that's from, you know, four feet away. That's not from being, you know, <laughs> right underneath. So they do make a model of the 450 that is a 450 200, which actually has four independent trackers built into it. And it's basically, it's, a, it's the exact same thing. It just has four trackers. So you've got 450 volts at up to a maximum of 20 amps a piece. And I think really it's just a wider unit, but four isolated trackers, which allow you, again, you can set up four different arrays at four different angles, four different positions to be able to maximize your amount of PV potential. Well, I'm sorry if there's any excess noise. My, my microphone died on me and I didn't realize it. <laughs> you probably did because you saw the stupid red light blinking on the microphone, but uh, I, I'm really happy with how this thing has worked. I mean, 743 kilowatts in a little over a month from 5,000 watts worth of panels. I think that's doing pretty well, especially on the end swing of summertime here in Michigan. I would love to be able to max this out, though. Uh, put another 3,000 watts on there and get it all configured so that I can utilize all potential. I mean, honestly, even if I could over panel a little bit and even put, you know, 5,000 up on each tracker. So then I would be able to really utilize the panels and, and the charge controller on the cloudy days, which we tend to get an awful lot of here in Michigan. One other thing I forgot to mention is with the CAN bus connection, it does connect into the servo and that does allow data to be displayed here on my display as well as uh, pushing the tracking data on the VRM, which allows you to see your tracking data broken down based on your individual trackers. And you also have the ability to view specifics about each individual tracker. You can customize your displays and view the individual states of your solar charger what your current ratings are, your individual power production, your voltages, so you can really see all the data and all the history related to this charge controller, just like you can with your other interconnected devices through your circle. So I hope this has been helpful for you. 
I hope that if you're looking for a higher voltage charge controller that you take a look at the Victron 450 100 charge controller. You won't be disappointed. It does cost a little bit more money, but you're paying for quality, for reliability, and you're paying for a really good feature set in your charge controller. So with that, I'm gonna let y'all go. Uh, y'all stay safe, stay cool, and we'll catch up with you later.